Good morning. We're the 20, would you say 29th or 28th of, of, of July? The 31st. The 31st. Oh <laughs> the 31st of July. And we're so glad to be with you this morning. We're studying the book of Daniel. And I want to apologize if I'm not doing something that is helping you. Perhaps you can help me to teach with a different approach or to share with a different approach or to share some things that you want me to know. But I, I want to, to ask your help. I'm doing the best I can to teach on the book of Daniel. We're in chapter 2. In the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed the dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep broke from him. <coughs> his spirit was troubled. Now Nebuchadnezzar is in charge of the Babylon Empire, one of the greatest <coughs> empires of those days, the largest one. And under his care were four young children, age 18 to 20, including Daniel. And of course, the king has a dream. Now, this dream and this vision is inspired by the Lord. God is putting that in his mind. And the idea that world events are not related to the will of God, I have to differ. Because when you look at media, you look at consequences, but the big picture is greater than what the media, media reports events that happened yesterday. But we Christians need to look at history from a perspective that is greater than yesterday, an overall perspective. And that is exactly what I've been trying to do to this study. How to see a little bit the, what God is doing instead of what media is doing. And so... By the way, we study media, dreams, and visions, and there are seven types of dreams, seven types of visions, and of course, that is part of our repertoire of teaching materials, and, and you can assign or request DJ Collins to send you uh, information on that. We have plenty of information as to dreams and visions. I can't spend much time on this, but dreams come to sleep during the sleeping time. It's information to a person about the largest will of God that pertains to future. And I, I have a, a, a vision. The last vision I had in my life was about, I'd say, about three years ago, or close to four years ago now, when, when Mike Reader is driving... Uh, passing the furniture of Betty McKinney, passing through the the division between Georgia and Alabama, right in the in the division, the the sign saying, "This is Alabama now, welcome." That I had a vision, and of course I was troubled that we didn't have a Bible teacher. That Betty was retiring, going to Montana, going to Van Buren, Arkansas. And, of course, things were just difficult. I couldn't realize what to do or how to do it. And suddenly, I had a vision. A curtain opened up, and smiling was Jennifer Bauman. And, of course, that was an indication to me to hire her and put her to work for us, in which she is doing a wonderful job up to this day, the greatest, the one of the greatest blessings in my life. I've discipled her for 20 years, but never, never dreamed that she would be teaching, which is kind of interesting. So, now, here's an interesting dream. Abimelech had a woman he saw on the streets during Abraham's time, and he took her home, <laughs> only for the Lord to give him a dream and said, you're a dead man. She is married to Abraham. Let her go. And, of course, <laughs> of course, that was a very scary dream to Abimelech. Now, <laughs> You sure don't want to marry the wrong person, do you? Okay. Now, 
So the king commanded to call all the magicians. He had a dream. The dream was trouble. That's DJ right here, that's Noel right here with a cup of coffee from Jerusalem. <laughs> Look at that. From Nazareth. From, from Nazareth, right there. See that? Nazareth. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. The king committed to call all the magicians to interpret the dream. His dream was a very complex dream. And the interesting thing about this dream is that he forgot what the dream was all about. Now think. You want to have the dream interpreted. You call the magicians, the astrologers, to come into his court. And, but I can't tell you what I dream about. It's taken completely out of my mind. So, let me go then to chapter, chapter 2. And the demands of Nebuchadnezzar. It begins with verse 4. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king of Syria, Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we'll show you the interpretation. And the, and the king said, I can't tell you the dream. It's been taken from me. And the word here is, uh, the thing is gone from me. That's verse 5, chapter 2. The king, the thing is gone from me. King James translates, the king is, the thing is gone from me. Now, what do you mean by that? What do you mean? You want somebody to interpret a dream, but the Lord removed the dream from, from, from the heart of Nebuchadnezzar. Why? Because God sees the unlimited. You see, if he told the dream, and Nebuchadnezzar would tell the dream to the astrologers, they would come up with all kinds of things. And so to make it more difficult for revelation to take place, the dreams were taken out of the mind of, uh, of Nebuchadnezzar, which is, which is a very godly thing to do because the only person who can, can, can bring a dream to the mind and recollect that dream and, 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 and speak about the dream and tell you what the dream was and what it meant. So God saw something there. Why, why am I taking time to tell you about this? The reason why is because we live in a time where we don't know the future, okay? We don't know the future. We don't know what God is doing. We don't know what's going to happen. We live in this question mark that uh, we have ideas, we have concepts, we have, have information that we bring to pass into our minds, and, and we say to ourselves, this is what is going to be because I've, I've made up my mind about it. This is what it is. In terms of ministry, I want you to know that I had no idea that a weekend with 200 pastors in Peru would cause a commotion that today is about to take place to where hundreds of churches in Peru are the Methodist, United Methodists will leave and cling to uh, an evangelical church or cling to global ministries. And of course, I've been looking at the scenario of, the, of what's happening, and it's amazing. It's amazing what God is going to do in Peru. And, and, of course, uh, I believe that global ministries will be successful in Peru. I don't know how, but it will be successful. So, so sometimes information causes difficulties. When there's no information and God has to reveal everything from scratch, then, then, it's, then, then, it, then it's supernatural. And so, verse 5, the king answered and said to the Chaldeans, the thing is gone from me. The thing is gone from me. I have no idea what idea what I what I dreamed. And so, verse six, but if you show the dream 
in the interpretation thereof. You shall receive from me gifts and rewards. But if you don't show, you're going to die. <laughs> and so there's a threat among the whole court of the Babylonians. Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, Babylon, where the captives were. Three deportations already taken place. Much blood in Judah run down the streets. So the question here is this. Whoever can tell me what I dreamed last night, I'll reward it. Whoever can't tell me, I, I, I want to just wring your neck. One of the two. And so the, the astrologers simply begin to insist on this. They begin to say, the king answered, let the king tell <coughs> his servants the dream. Will show the interpretation. And the king simply said, I have no interpretation. It's gone from me. You're going to have to tell me. If you don't make me known this way, I don't know how things are going to be for you. They simply said, it's a rare thing, verse 11. It's a rare thing that the king requires. There's none other who can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. For the first time, the astrologers in the, in, 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 in the Chaldeans, which were gifted in interpretation of dreams, began to think it's kind of the supernatural exists, but we don't know about it. We haven't seen about it. We don't know what to do about it. Now, the lesson here is simply this. When you begin to talk about Jesus to the lost, remember that they know nothing about it. And so to come in with the Bible and begin to teach from them when they, in fact, never read the Bible, it's a waste of time. Great is he that is in us than he that is in the world, meaning that you, you can get through a relationship with someone by making friends, by talking to them by seeing if they can get, uh, get along with you and create a report. And this is beginning to happen in the court of, of, of Nebuchadnezzar because way down in another house, three blocks down the street, there, are a, there is a, a two boys, four boys, age 18 to 20, who are praying and asking God to bless them in this situation. So, for well, this cause, the king was angry and very furious and, and commanded the, the army, the soldiers, to just kill all of the astrologers and all of the people, Chaldeans, that had no idea about the dream. Now, verse 14 is the first time that Daniel comes in the picture. He answered with counsel and wisdom a very arc the captain of the king's guard, which was going forth to slay the wise men. of He answered and said, Ariat, the king's captain, why the decree is so hasty from the king? Then Ariat made the king thing known to Daniel. So, so the thing made known to Daniel was the struggle of the king since Ariat, the captain of the guard, is about to go kill a bunch of, of, of astrologers and, and, and dream weavers. And so the need comes to Daniel supernaturally God created an encounter with Ariat and Daniel in order to solve the problem that is before the nation is that something that happens in our time the way we do things definitely look if you wait upon the Lord he will open the door God can open doors no man can open and close doors no man can close the problem is that we get ahead of God and we don't know what he's doing when in fact he can create a situation to where you will meet this one and the two will bring the will of God. How does the will of God penetrate and moves upon a ministry or situation? It's just a question of patience. You know, just patience, just slow down. Try to see. I hear so many things come into my mind all the time. And what I really, really are trying to search was, what is it, Lord, that you want me to do about this situation? 
Now, you pro- pro- you probably say to me, <laughs> to me <laughs> when I don't wait upon the Lord, I get all kinds of ideas, but has, God has nothing to do with the ideas. In other words, dreams doesn't mean the will of God at all times. Satan can create dreams in your mind that, that are contrary to the will of God. So what is it that causes a dream to be certified? Is that it speaks louder, clear, and confirmed within your mind. So let me give you an example. A young man came to my door, and his name was, he wanted a job. His name was Jacob, just because Jacob. And so he sat on the computer. Before him, a lady came from a, from a place in town and, and, and came to the office and asked for the job. So the first thing she said to me, remember, sit down, that's the computer down there. She said, I don't know how to turn it on. And I asked her, do you know anything about computer? No, sir, I don't know, know nothing. So I had to let her go, and then comes Jacob. Now, Jacob was young and bright and sharp, and as he sat on the chair, he said these words to me, Mr. Bumfin, before you hire me or even interview me, I'm dyslexic. Of course, because I didn't know what dyslexic meant. And, and now you do. <laughs> no, no, I do. And out of there, I went to pick up the mail. And when I went to pick up the mail, there was a lady sitting inside of the car that brought Jacob here. It happened to be her her mother. And, <laughs> and of course, the thing that I did was simply look at her. And as I looked at her, God spoke to me and said, that's the mother, hire him. Now, let me tell you, do you know the danger of a dyslexic person sitting on the on the on the main database of the ministry to correct zip codes. How'd that work out? That worked out that the Lord gave me a system on how to help him. And he did several interviews and now he's working for a doctor down the street and making twice as much money as I paid him. That's good though, for him. For him was the, so that's the will of God in terms of <laughs> what God, so that come DJ and Noel. You see, now, DJ and Noel can just do computer. They, 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 they can chew any database that brought it to him and does a wonderful job. And I'm trying to connect him to the perfect will of God because it's not about computer. It's about who, who he is and who she is. And this is called the, the Collins family. All right. So, Nebuchadnezzar is not playing games. He simply says, unless I hear. But on the way to kill the astrologers, Ariat meets Daniel. And when he meets Daniel, Ariat speaks to him what's, what's going on in the king's court. Now, is that a movement of the Lord? Yes, it is. And so in my head, in my spirit, I'm constantly trying to listen to what the Lord wants. Now and then I tell him what I want. And I tell him what I want. I have a will too. Yeah. I don't know if he approves of that or not, but I tell him. And so what I'm saying to you is that in terms of how we're going to get the story right is to see what enter into the mind because God now has to talk to Daniel. Let's take a look. Daniel went in and desire of the king that he would give him, him time and that he would show, and he show the interpretation. So Ariat simply said, he had a dream. Nobody knows what the dream is. And Daniel said, give me a time. Schedule my appointment. I want to see this king. He's got something, and I know. But did Daniel know what the interpretation was? No. So why did Daniel <laughs> decide to ask the king for an appointment? He's trusting God. Look, Daniel went in and desire of the king that he would give him time that he would show the king the interpretation. So sometimes in life, when you don't know what to do, when your company is just 
open and you are developing, when you are dealing with the future of your life in terms of what you like to do, then one of the best things to do is to move in faith in an area that requires much faith. Is to move in wisdom in an area that requires much wisdom. And he simply said, I can do it. Basing the fact that God had to intervene. So let's take a look. Let's show the moment when God intervenes in the life of Daniel. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishar, Ar- Araziah, his companions. That he would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret that Daniel and his fellows would not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. In other words, we're dealing with their necks. In other words, I don't know what's going to happen, but I first need to protect you guys because as far as we know, this incident is going to create a problem for us. We're, our, we're, we're like the astrologers. We're going to be killed. Now, then, then verse 19 is the moment when God hears their prayer. What, what really happened, they had a prayer meeting. And on verse 9, 18, they had a prayer meeting. And they began to ask, Lord, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Tell us exactly what you want us to tell us. And look at verse 19. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. So what is the vision? He saw a statue. And we're going to cover this a little bit as to the parts of the statue. But all in relation to the life of Nebuchadnezzar and the future of that great nation. So the dream is of interpretation. It is one of the most important dreams in understanding all the way from the Medes, the Persians, the Romans, and what's going to happen to that great area of the world. So it is a dream, prophetic dream, that Nebuchadnezzar is treated and granted by God. So now you, your position has to change as to Nebuchadnezzar. Because if God related to him, tell him a dream that only can be interpreted is that the Lord is deeply in charge in this man, in the children of Israel, in Daniel per se, in his three, three brothers. And it is supernaturally delivered in the mind of Daniel. So Daniel has got to be one of the most exciting prophetic people that ever lived. You know, in the annuals of the Jewish canon, Daniel is mentioned, and Isaiah is not mentioned. Jeremiah is not mentioned. Uh, uh, Ezekiel is not mentioned, but Daniel alone. So the Jews interpret and see Daniel as one of the, the greatest prophets that ever lived. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Now, then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. The same dream that was given to Nebuchadnezzar now is given to Daniel, and no doubt that very same night. I want to call your attention to the very same night. Because time, Satan operates in time and space. Time, how long it takes for the Lord God to be implemented in your life. It takes time. Some days you can tell people that have been waiting on the will of God for 10, 15 years. In every situation in people's lives, when Satan is involved, he slows time. What could have happened in two years, in a year, now it's going to take two. Since there is an interference and, and, and there's something happening and Satan is involved in that, it will take three years. I've met people that have been parked for 20 years and not a single expression of God's will be, be allowed to them. So I want to ask you, are you in God's time or are you are in Satan's time? Now, one of, the, one of the most revealing things to me about that is that if I look at my life in the last 80 years, I can show you a, 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 a development that only God could have done it. 
It was just the Lord. You know, I came to Athens on a station wagon with three children, Mary Lucy and I. I stopped at Broad Street. I went into admissions office. And there was an old lady sitting in the back waiting for me because God put her there. And she paid two master's degrees, housing and rent and food and, and everything else. Now, that doesn't happen to everybody. So what is that? Is the innovation of God upon your life because he sees you trying to do something that you've never been done before. So Satan operates time and time in space. Now, time is slowing down what could be into what perhaps will take quite a while to happen. Does that speak to you? Huh? Does that say something to you? Because because the development of RBM, you know, before RBM, this Rekindle the Flame conference, the Lord showed me two people to call in exactly what I wanted. I mean, he told me 13,000 each. So I knew that the Lord was in the conference. I didn't have to have an interpretation or a dream or, <laughs> you know, it's the only conference that I prepared for three days and didn't preach. And I thought to myself, you know, that was just really a punishment from the Lord. Not really. He baptized a young lady who came out of nowhere with her father and her mother, and, and she was desperate, and she knelt down. And then next door to her was a, a little young lady called Ruby that jumped out of her chair and ran to the altar and jumped on top of and it was the sister of, of Anne. The last name is, is difficult. Malanek. Anne Malanek. Anne, Anne and Ruby Malanek. Well, the father wasn't there. The mother came rushing towards his, her daughter and little Ruby was baptized with the Holy Spirit and opened a door of healing that went in for hours. Now, I just want you to know that Satan operates in time and then space. What is space? Space is, is the mental faculties. There are billions and millions of neurons in your brain who can intellect and rationale, decision-making, and it creates space. It go, goes into physical areas. It slows down how do you see space, physical space, and then what you see in mental space. Because I want, you to, I want to show you this. On chapter 1, verse 17, Daniel wrote this. And as for the four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. So in the beginning of chapter 1, verse uh, 17, God told Daniel everything had to do with dreams and visions, and he did not understand that the king would have a dream, and the decision to interpret that dream had to do with the world and the years to come of a thousand years ahead of time. So God opened his mind. Now, why is it that uh, you can't see straight? Because your space is taken by the hand of Satan that may, confuses you and bothers you and torments you and causes you not to sleep properly and eradicates pain and, he, and, and, and suddenly the flesh takes hold of who you are and before too long you are in a battle that happens and it has grabbed you and the torment probably say, Rick, I don't feel nothing. I feel happy. I feel good. But remember that you are locked into time. Remember that you are locked into space. So, so Daniel, on chapter 2 now, let's go back to chapter 2. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of, the, of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He is giving absolute rulership and control by the Lord of all his creation. 
in acknowledging that God is the one who spoke to me last night, that what I heard was the voice of the Holy Spirit, and, and what, I, what, I, what I'm going to say didn't come from me, it came from the Lord, and He's the one who did it. You see, acknowledgement of what God has done, is if you stand against it, you are sinning against the Holy Spirit. There's a lot of indication of that. Because if you stop the mouth of the person who had an experience with God, you're saying, God, don't reveal to that person what to say. Because it might offend someone. It's a sin. I want you to know that Rick Bonfim said that. I'll take ownership of that statement. Why? Because a testimony and they overcame him by the him who Satan. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So in fact, chapter two began to deal with verse twenty one, and I'm going to twenty three. And he changes the times in the seasons. I don't think I can go to twenty three. It's already I'm out of time. Go ahead. And he changes the times in seasons. Watch this. Watch this. And remove, ki he removes kings, sets up kings, gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to them who know understanding. This refers to successive empires. Because the dream has to do with successive empires in the world to come. Okay? So Daniel is just preparing you to understand the successiveness of God's hand in terms of kingdoms and empires is a truth that have to be understood. And the vision reveals that. This is what Daniel saw. It, it, so in other words, verse 21 is simply saying to us today, that when God deals with successive empires, successive kings, and change of seasons, and change of times, he is simply referring to the dream he saw last night and interpreting. It's already interpreting. So what came out of his mouth is, is part of the interpretation. He reveals the deep and secret things. He knows what it is in the darkness, and light dwells with him. So God is not only the God of nature, of providence, of men, but God of revelation. So God reveals. I can't tell you how important that is. If you are in an environment that is taken by Satan to where revelation of time and space is only what you hear from what Satan does, and God is not allowed to reveal. The Holy Spirit leaves the environment. He can make known to men what otherwise men could never know. He is the very source of all light and enlightenment. First Timothy 6.16. 6, Write that down. Last verse. And I thank you and praise you, O thou God of my Father. <laughs> right in front of the king. I thank you, O oh God, I praise you, who has given me wisdom and might. And has made known unto me now what we desire of you. For you have now made known unto us the king's matter. So David simply opened up and said, You have made known to us the king's matter. In other words, what the king Dream last night, God told me in detail the following night, and I'm here to tell you what he had. That is a supernatural move of God the size of a football field. In other words, what, what Daniel is simply saying, I'm going to tell you what you never know, who nobody knows, only God knows, and he has revealed to me. He addresses God as the God of his fathers. He addresses God as the God of his fathers. He appeals to him as the covenant God of Israel who had led their fathers through the wilderness. In the moment that you are experiencing right now, you actually realize that there were 
a million people in captivity. Go to Ezekiel chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, all the way to 11. And, and you de he describes clearly what is happening with the people of God. Now question, where is God moving? Up in the court of Nebuchadnezzar? Up close to the river Shabar, where the captives were? Where Ezekiel is ministering to them at the same time? Is God in, in control of the deportations? Is God in control? Now, how about America? Is God in control of Biden? Well, he removes kings, established kings. He removed Biden. It's almost impossible not to think that uh, Biden was, was, was to be removed. Why did God allow Biden to be removed? Why? Yeah. Yes. You see, I have total confidence that Biden's sins against God were collected. You don't allow the, the just one fact, you don't allow one and a half million children to be aborted and killed on the table of birth and get away with it. God's people have been praying for a long time. So let's stop right here, and I want to thank you for listening to me. I hope that your podcast will work on this, yep. DJ, yep. that people that travel that will be able to listen. Thank you that, that I got through about 35 minutes. Howdy doody. Bye-bye. God, I thank you, Lord, that you helped me to understand your perfect will for the life of, of us that are here in this room. I claim, God, Isaiah, Isaiah 40, 31, and ask you to bless us, Lord, today in Jesus' name. Amen.